Hello! In today's video, we're going to go over how to make a simple shelf system. We canned a whole lot of canned goods this year. Our garden was, was very, very productive and we were out of space. So we decided to make just a simple shelf unit to store our cans. And this thing will hold from half pints, pints on up to quarts. And this is the finished product here behind me. Uh, so what we're going to do today, we'll go over what tools are needed, what parts are needed, and how to put it all together. Also, this is a very customizable shelf. You can make this as many shelves as you want, as wide or as deep or as tall as you want. Very simple to do. The cost of materials is minimal. All you're looking at is a bunch of two befores and some screws, basically. So, here we go. Okay, let's talk about materials. What do we need to actually make one of these bad boys? I ended up using 15 two befores. I used one and a half full sheets of melamine boards. They're four by eight sheet panels. I used a full four by eight and then a four by four. It was easier for us just to pick up two full sheets. So I've got half of the sheet left over for future projects. You'll want some screws for your Craig jig if you're using a Craig jig. You'll want some screws to tie the legs in to the shelving units. A little bit of glue when you're putting it together, and that's it. So screws, glue, two befores, some melamine sheets. That's all the materials you need. And in shortly here in the video, I'll have a cutout list of if you wanted to make this particular board. Like I said earlier, it's very easily customizable. So you can make it wider, deeper, taller, fewer shells, more shells. Uh, very simple to do and not a whole lot of cost of materials. This is pretty much just two before screws and glue. Okay, the tools that you're going to need for this. Um, let's talk about the Craig jig real quick. I love to use pocket holes for projects like this. Very simple to use, very quick, very easy. Uh, this is the jig itself. Comes with a clamp here to help hold the boards together when you're putting your screws in. Uh, if you don't have one, I'd urge you to look at getting one. Now on the other extreme, if you want to go all out, do some serious woodwork in here, you could do mortise and tenon. I'd be beautiful, beautiful. Uh, but it's going to take you just a wee bit more time. So uh, Craig Jig is one of those things that we use a lot on these kind of projects. Uh, drill bits, and I used a countersink bit uh, when I was putting, attaching the legs to the sides so that the screw heads wouldn't stick out. Also, a speed square comes in real handy when you're putting it all together, make sure everything is square. That's really about it. There, there's not a whole lot of tools needed here. Um, you are going to need a saw of some sort to cut your two befores to length. You could use a table saw, a chop saw, hand saw, whatever you have handy uh, to cut your wood. So let's go put it together. All right, so here's the wood for one of the shelves. Uh, the particular one I'm building today, it's going to have a series of six shelves spaced 12 inches apart. I'm going to have the first shelf off the bottom of the ground, roughly two inches. So the total height is going to be about 62 inches on it. Uh, with the one foot between each shelf for 12 inches, that's going to give me plenty of space to put in quart jars. You know, that's about the biggest jars we use. Uh, typically, we're using pints and half pints. Uh, so there's going to be a whole lot of room for storage. So it's a simple layout. Uh, you basically take your two long pieces, have your shorter pieces in between. Uh, I had made something similar before for a growing shelf for plants and I over-engineered the heck out of it. And what happened was it's really sturdy uh, and it's gonna be around long after I leave this mortal coil, uh, but it's heavy, heavy, heavy. So I, on this one, what we've got is your two long pieces, your two end pieces, one in the middle for, middle for support for your shelf to sit on. And this particular one is 46 inches wide by about 26 inches deep. So next step is going to be to use pocket holes. Now, I love these pocket holes. They're really simple, they're really sturdy, and it speeds up the process. But of, of course, you don't need to use pocket holes. If you just want to use screws and glue, uh, go right ahead. I just personally like the pocket holes because it speeds things up. Uh, so next step will be the pocket holes. Okay, I've got the pocket hole jig set up here. So next step is going to be put a couple of holes in the end of each one of these cross pieces. All right, 
that's it for the pocket holes. We're ready to put this thing together. What I'm gonna do is use a little bit of glue on the butt joints and then uh, pop in the screws and we'll put this all together. I've also put a towel down because I don't want it to mess up the table saw uh, table on there. So just better safe than sorry to keep that safe. Uh, if you've used a Craig jig before, these clamps really, really, really come in handy to keep everything together while you screw it in. All right, one down. Now what I did on this long piece here uh, was I measured, it's 46 inches wide, so I measured uh, 23 inches. So I'm gonna put this cross piece just dead center on that. Now when you're putting these together, your cross piece is gonna have your pocket hole screw uh, holes on one side. It really doesn't matter which side they go on, uh, they're gonna be hidden with the shelf over them. So it's entirely up to you. Guys, it is July in Texas and it's getting hot. I don't have the fan going because it really messes with the audio on this microphone. So I'm suffering for this. Okay, first shelf support is done. Uh, this is good, it's solid, it'll hold a lot of weight. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and put the other five together. I'm gonna get some bands going and uh, I'll get back with you uh, when those are done. Alrighty, as you can see behind me, we've got the six shelving uh, base units built. Uh, these pieces here are gonna be the legs. Uh, on this unit, I have made them 62 inches tall. So what we're gonna do is measure or draw a line on each one. Uh, this is gonna be the top end. So I'm gonna come down and draw a line every 12 inches, and that's where we'll mount the shelving units. Okay, now that the lines are in the on the boards, uh, marked in, I believe it was about three quarters of an inch uh, from the edge of each board to mark where we're going to drill our pilot holes. I used a screw bit that was eh, just about the, the width of the screws themselves and drilled pilot holes across the whole of the boards. Then I used a countersink bit uh, to countersink in. Uh, the countersink bit's not really required, but it sure, from an aesthetic standpoint, makes things look a whole lot better. Um, I've got a set of those, and I'll put links to a lot of this stuff in the description on the video. I uh, typically get this stuff at Amazon or Home Depot. Uh, but the countersink bit is something that comes in, end up using a whole lot more than you think you would. And then these are all the boards uh, after they have been countersunk. Now it's time for assembly. And this is the second one of these types of shelving systems I've made. 
on the first one when I made it, I mistakenly tried to uh, basically prop up the legs and mount each shelf vertically. Uh, it worked, but it was a real pain in the tuchus. Uh, so this time we just set it up in the garage on its side. And if you've got clamps, they really come in handy uh, at this point. So you can clamp all of the shelf units to the legs, uh, get everything squared up with the square, uh, drill your pilot holes, and then go ahead and sink your screws in. Just you know, all six shelves at one time. Uh, another little, I don't, I'm sure everyone knows this, but a, a little just speed trick is if you uh, put all your screws in, and start them just a bit you can just kind of walk down the row and and get everything screwed in much faster than trying to put in them one at a time and the final unit well semi-final unit uh, the the carcass itself is put together ended up <laughs> being a little heavier than i thought it would be uh, the first we made was super super heavy this one is, is pretty weighty as well but uh, it is solid so this falls under the extra effort subject i would guess i uh, went ahead and decided to paint this uh, so have a sprayer uh, so filled it up full of some primer and primed it and then we went in home depot again and found a, a paint color that we liked uh, which was uh, i guess a topish kind of color and we sprayed it with the taupe paint and i love these sprayers uh, in that it dries so quickly I was able to do all of this in the same day. Uh, the, the primer took a ah, half hour to dry. I went ahead and left it for an hour and then we sprayed it with this paint here and let it dry overnight. And the next day we were ready to assemble it and put it all together. Uh, one thing on the paint sprayer, um, I do like to use water-based paints and that's just a personal preference. And really it's because of the ease of the cleanup i can use soap and water and, and get it all clean without having to use a lot of chemicals uh, but the the spray went really well and i love the color if you have access to a table saw then you can cut your melamine board shelves to size if you don't uh, you can use a circular saw and i know the big stores home depot lowe's and such uh, they will be happy to cut them for you now, they say that they don't do exact measurements or exact cuts, but I've never had a problem asking them, hey, can you cut these three boards at you know, 13 and a half inches? And they've been able to do so with no problem. Uh, what I'm doing here is I just kind of marked where the cut line was going to be, and I'm using blue painter's tape to help keep a straight or a, a, a detailed edge where the cut's made. I don't have a real fine blade on the table saw, and so I was using a ripping blade there. And it did a real good job. I pulled the tape off and the lines were nice, neat, and straight. Uh, but those are some large boards and I don't have extension tables on my saw. And uh, that's about as big of a piece as I'd really want to cut at, at any time without those extensions. And at last, it's time to put it all together. Uh, here we are just putting in the melamine board shelves. Now, five of the shelves, the bottom five, are all the exact same width. I uh, did make the top shelf a little bit wider so it would cover up the legs there. Uh, but it all went together. looks great. It is sturdy. And those melamine boards, again, are super heavy. Uh, so right as I speak this to you, it's still sitting in the garage. I'm going to take the shelves out and uh, brother's going to come down and help me get it moved into the house. But at this point, we got plenty of space for storage. These are really easy to build, and I hope you enjoyed watching. If you have any suggestions or comments or ideas, uh, just hit me up in the comments and let me know. Thank you all so much.